Hey y'all, what can I get you? They just took another batch of buffalo wings out of the fryer. We can't stay to eat. We have merrily stopped by for a quick celebratory drink. What's the occasion? Did a husky take best in show at Westminster? Certainly not! A true husky neither seeks nor accepts the approval of humans! Besides, that show is back in February. Today was our last day working on the All Species Shelter Project. That's what we're celebrating. Last day? Mm-hmm. The construction is finished, all our equipment has been delivered and installed, the staff has been hired, all that's left is to open the doors on Monday morning. At which point it will become the responsibility of the staff. I'll have a white husky, please. Not sure I know how to make that. It is also erroneously called a white Russian. Gotcha. Coming right up. And for you, Stuffy? Oh, just a club soda for me. Club soda? That's it? He's on a diet. That's so. I'm not on a diet. I mean, I am, but it's not for me. It's for Steve. Why is Steve on a diet? He doesn't look like he needs to lose weight. A little flabby, maybe, but not bad for someone I assume put zero effort into keeping fit. It's not about weight. He took his blood pressure on the machine in the pharmacy section last time he went grocery shopping, and it said he has pre-hypertension. He kind of freaked out about it. So he's sworn off alcohol and been trying to cut sodium out of his diet. Well, good for him, I guess. But what's that got to do with you? I'm doing the same thing, in solidarity. Wow, you're a good friend, Stuffy. Thank you. I agree. You are a good friend. And a good peer. By which I mean, an easily pressured one. Here you go. Shall we drink a toast? Oh, I suppose. Though I don't really see the point. Why not? Drinking an alcoholic beverage to celebrate an accomplishment is a proud husky tradition. It's just a shame you've chosen not to honor it after all your hard work. Well, you're choosing to honor it, which makes sense since you're a husky. And I'm choosing not to honor it, which also makes sense because I am not a husky. And don't you ever forget it! You know, Stuffy, maybe this isn't my place. But then again, I run a bar now, so maybe it is. My daddy had high blood pressure and his doctor told him that one or two drinks a day wouldn't hurt him. And you don't drink that much to begin with. I'm sure having one right now wouldn't do you any harm. Harmless to your health and in accordance with husky tradition. Your choice seems clear. All right, you've convinced me. I'll take a whiskey sour. Coming right up. Only hold the maraschino cherry. I'm on a diet. You got it. You don't need to worry. I won't tell the human you cheated. That's okay. It's only one drink. I'm sure Steve will understand. How could you betray me? I told you. Hmm. I was counting on you, Stuffy. I was counting on you to be strong and to keep me strong. And you can still count on me. I told you we're in this together. Unless you have something to celebrate. Congratulations, by the way. Thank you. It was a team effort. It really was. Led by you, though. True. Supervised by me. Also true. But back to your stunning act of disloyalty. I really don't think one drink is going to hurt me. Probably not, but that's not the point. We were in this together. You're supposed to be following the same rules as me. I don't think one drink would hurt you either. I can't take that chance. We're talking about my life here. I think it's great that you're taking responsibility for your health. I do. And I want to help. But you have pre-hypertension, according to a blood pressure machine at a grocery store. It's not as if you're about to have a heart attack. <laughs> Maybe not, but pre-hypertension leads to hypertension, which increases my risk of a heart attack. A heart attack. It's what my father will have died of. I don't want to have gone out the same way. If you're that worried about your frail human health, instead of whining about Stuffy cheating on his sympathy diet, why don't you do something about it yourself? I am doing something about it. I thought I was doing something about it even before this. I've been a vegetarian for years. That's true, but you still eat a lot of processed food. I know. And quite frankly, having to face a future without Morningstar Farms chicken nuggets in it is already upsetting enough without you rubbing it in. Assuming I even have a future, that blood pressure machine at the grocery store might not be the most accurate thing in the world. Good point. If you're genuinely concerned, you should make an appointment with your doctor- Oh my god, Avengers is next week! What if I don't live to see Avengers? Facing up to your own mortality is always difficult. Especially when you can't expect to be nuzzled for all time by the loving and eternal nose of Husko. Well, you know the old saying, baby. You can't always get what you want. True, but in this case, what I want is just for you to be a little more selective about the cases you accept. If people want to pay me to do something that I can do, why should I leave money on the table, baby? 
Sometimes you have to do something that doesn't feel good now because it will make things better later. I know it feels good to take some of these cases now, but in the long run it complicates our efforts to reposition ourselves as an anti-fascist, socially conscious detective agency, a repositioning that has been very good for us financially, which I think you would want to continue. Absolutely, I want to continue it, baby. But as long as we're taking cases to fuck up fascists and racists and shit, what does it hurt if I also sneak a few extra ones in where they can fit? He makes a good point, Rabbit. Especially the bit about taking as much money as people want to give us. Today you spent four hours looking for a set of curtains that were on the set of Archie Bunker's house on All in the Family. Correction? Somebody paid us $500 for me to find that set of curtains, which I did find. Also, they weren't the curtains in Archie Bunker's house. They were the curtains in the house next door where the Jeffersons lived. I stand corrected. And then Gloria and Meathead moved in there, did they not? Yeah, and don't forget little Joey, baby. The point is, yes, we made $500, but that was a case that the client could have taken to another agency. And while you were working on that, you could have been working on one of the other cases brought specifically to us because the client didn't think they could find better help somewhere else. So what do you want me to do, baby? I want you to start saying no sometimes. Now hold up, baby, that's not fair. I say no all the time. I can vouch for that. He said it last week when I wanted to fuck while he was watching the never ended story. It was the scene where Artax was sinking into the swamp, baby. Have a little respect. That's the hottest scene! Have you ever said no to something work-related? As a matter of fact, I have. The other day, I was sitting on this guy who's been using public Wi-Fi at a coffee shop on Franklin Street to send dick pics to his ex-girlfriend. He noticed me watching him and he must have been paranoid or something because he came over and started getting in my face. So I followed him outside and jumped him and dragged him into an alley where nobody could see us. And as I was beating his head against the pavement, he kept saying, stop, stop. And I said, and I quote, no, and kept on bashing, baby. Okay, well, I think you should exercise that same kind of restraint when it comes to accepting cases. Speaking of which... I got it. Watch this shit, baby. Toby Benson Investigations, baby. Tell me about it, baby. Uh Uh-huh. You know what? I'm gonna have to say no this time. We got our hands full over here, and unfortunately, I do not think we can do that right now. You better call somebody else, baby. No, thank you, baby. Bye. Is that good enough for you? Yes. Out of curiosity, what were they calling about? To offer me a deal on a timeshare in Topeka. (sighs) <sighs> okay. What? I said no, baby. He said no. Is that a hard no, or is that more of a no, however? Okay, thank you. Howdy. Hey, Prospector. Miss Millicent. Prospector? Just thought I'd drop in and say hi. What are you all up to? At the moment, Steve is on the phone with the Make-A-Wish Foundation trying to arrange an advanced screening of the new Avengers movie for himself. The Make-A-Wish Foundation? Good lord, what's the matter with him? How much time have you got? He might have a condition that can lead to high blood pressure. Oh, that doesn't sound terminal. No, it doesn't. Hi, yes, I'm still here. Okay, well, I'm calling on behalf of a young man who is suffering from a serious medical condition. We have no idea how much time he has left, and it would be just terrific if we could get him in to see the new Avengers movie before it opens next week. Oh, it's all he talks about. Hmm? What condition does he have? Uh, It's his heart. You need a doctor to sign off. Well, that's great, because his doctor is right here. Just a second. Here, you're a doctor. Absolutely not. You're not dying. I'd be happy to help. Give me the phone. Thanks. I'm not a doctor, and the person you've been talking to isn't sick. Shame on your organization for allowing itself to be taken advantage of so easily. Hello? She was just joking. No, this isn't a joke. That was just... Hello? God damn it. Thanks, you all. They'll probably put me on some kind of a lifetime ban list for this. I won't get to see the Avengers early. I'll definitely never get to meet John Cena. 
Would you really feel right about getting to see a movie early or meeting John Cena if you knew you were taking an opportunity that rightfully belonged to a terminally ill child? <sighs> no, I guess not. But I don't think it's as bad as you're making it out to be. You don't think pretending to be terminally ill when you're not in order to get a reward is as bad as I make it out to be? At least I'd be able to enjoy the reward. How do you think kids who really are terminally ill feel when John Cena walks in the door? Sure, they're excited at first, but then it sinks in and they're probably like, Oh shit, John Cena's here. I'm not going to make it, am I? Wait, did you want to see the Avengers movie or did you want to meet John Cena? The Avengers. I mean, I'd probably want to meet John Cena eventually. When you're suffering from a different terminal illness. Maybe. It's not like I drew up a five-year plan or anything. Though you could have if you wanted to, because you don't have a terminal illness. I don't see what's so appealing about these Marvel movies anyway. If I had my way, this next one would be the last one. The marketing is so inescapable, it's even starting to invade husky spaces. But that's why they're so successful, Millicent. And it's not just the marketing, it's the fact that Marvel is smart enough to make movies that appeal to different demographics. Look what they did. They made Black Panther for black people. They made Captain Marvel for white women who used to drive around blasting Evanescence albums out of the speakers of their Hyundai accents. And for young white men, they made Iron Man, The Incredible Hulk, Iron Man 2, Thor, Captain America, The First Avenger, The Avengers, Iron Man 3, Thor, The Dark World, Captain America, The Winter Soldier, Guardians of the Galaxy, Avengers, Age of Ultron, Ant-Man, Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 2, Spider-Man Homecoming, Thor Rat Ragnarok, Avengers Infinity War, Ant-Man and the Wasp, and Avengers Endgame. Wasn't this originally about Steve having high blood pressure? How'd y'all get started on Marvel movies? The longer a conversation with Steve lasts, the higher the probability it will eventually turn into a discussion about superheroes, Star Trek, or professional wrestling. We call it Steve's Assured Nerd Derailment, or S-A-N-D. That's why we're always telling him to pound sand. Ha ha ha, very funny. Talking shit about me in front of my face like I'm not even here. Who am I, Grandpa Simpson? A Simpsons addendum. Only the fourth one this month. He's slowing down. Maybe there is something wrong with him. Hey folks, hope you liked this episode. This was the last show of our little spring run. We'll return in a few months, and in the meantime, the Whirlpool will be back in this slot. But before we go, here's Hans Krieger to tell you about how you can help us out. Hans? Guten Tag. If this video helped to distract you from the crushing banality of your existence, please click like, share the video, and subscribe to the channel. Also, please consider helping us to continue the momentarily rewarding but ultimately futile creation of these videos by supporting this channel via Patreon. Go to www.patreon.com slash Steve Shives to become a patron. Thank you, Hans. Is your existential crisis still ongoing? Oh, you mean about my hypertension? Your looming annihilation, yes. I mean, I'll still try to cut back on sodium, and I want to exercise more, but I'm less panicked about the whole thing than I was. Bloviating about superheroes always calms me down. So, you have chosen the path of willful ignorance. You will turn a blind eye to your failing body and endeavor to enjoy what little time you have left. Pretty much. Hey, I'm going to see Shazam tomorrow morning. You want to come? What have you heard as to its quality? According to most of the reviews I've read, it's not too bad. They made a good Shazam film? Holy moly. <laughs> so is that a yes? Yeah. <laughs>